Mom, Dad, I humbly suggest you save some money and shop Amazon for back to school. It's for my growth, meaning my body's growing at an alarming rate. And clothes you buy me this year will be very small very soon. Plus, the clothes I love today will be out of style tomorrow. But at least your wallet doesn't have to be my fashion victim if you shop low prices for school at Amazon. Hopefully this is helpful. Amazon. Spend less, smile more. Welcome to Saturday Story Circle, always on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated G for general audience. Chapter 3 Abigail spun as Timothy entered the room, her eyes blazing with fury and ready for a fight. She was half lifting and half dragging one of the old sawhorses that formed the base of her desk, and she was not having an easy time of it, in part because she seemed to want to do it as quickly as possible in an effort to restore her empire to its former glory. Her look was so fierce, Timothy backed up a step in spite of himself, and then grinned sheepishly. "'I met your dad,' he said. "'He seems nice.' "'He's home?' Abigail asked. Timothy thought that this seemed fairly obvious, but did not wish to provoke Abigail's wrath by saying so. "'Yes,' he said wisely instead. Abigail nodded, and seemed reassured that her brother would not now return and demolish her office again. "'Good,' she said. "'What about the evidence?' "'Back up,' Timothy said. "'If those... Goons, give anybody any more trouble? We can email a link to Officer Jackson in about thirty seconds. Abigail nodded. Good, she said, and began dragging the sawhorse again. After a moment, she stopped and looked at the boy in the doorway in surprise. Were you going to help me, or were you just planning on standing there? Right, sorry, Timothy said, although he had really just been waiting to be told what to do. He stepped forward and took one end of the sawhorse. Careful, Abigail said as she shifted back to the other end. It isn't heavy, it's just awkward. It's also pretty heavy, Timothy said with a gasp as he shuffled forward. Don't be a baby, Abigail scolded. It's easy for you, Timothy said. You have more leverage. What? Abigail said crossly. Leverage, Timothy said. Because your arms are so long. What are you saying? Abigail asked, sounding very much like her feelings were hurt. A panic look passed over Timothy's face. I didn't mean... I, I just meant... He sputtered before she burst out laughing. <laughs> Relax, she said, almost snorting with laughter. I was just messing with you. Put it down here. Here? He asked. Yes, here. Where it was before, put it down, she said, trying not to snap at him and not really succeeding. Come on, the other one is back here. The two investigators walked across the room where the other sawhorse was leaning against the wall. So that was your brother, Timothy said. If you say so, Abigail said grimly. Timothy blinked. I don't think I understand that, he said. Abigail clenched her teeth and picked up her end of the second sawhorse. "'He's the male offspring of the same father and mother as me,' she said. "'And if that makes a person my brother, then I guess he is, yes.' "'How else would you define it?' Timothy asked, pushing his glasses up and lifting the sawhorse. "'You wouldn't understand,' Abigail said, as they began to shuffle step across the floor. "'Probably not,' Timothy agreed." I always wished for a brother, or a sister. I wasn't particular. It just would have been nice to have someone else around. It's always just been Mom and me. Abigail was quiet for a moment. She knew that Timothy's mother worked for the local paper, in part because it had been Anne Gould who had written the article on her first case, but it occurred to her that she had never known anything else about Timothy's family and had not even thought to ask. She had just assumed that his life mirrored her own and that of her friends, 
and now that she knew it wasn't true, it felt too impossibly awkward to ask about it. It shouldn't be, but it was. It meant admitting that you didn't know, and had never known, and had never thought to ask. It was embarrassing. Abigail wondered if it was strange that she was so good at finding out things when other people wanted to know them, and so terrible at it if it was something that she actually cared about herself. She set her end of the sawhorse down, and waited for him to do the same, resisting the urge to fix the side he had been carrying by moving it just a few inches to the left. "'Well, anyway,' she said, "'he doesn't act like my brother, and he never has. On a good day, he treats me like a pet.' "'Yeah?' Timothy shrugged. I don't have much experience with that either. I have fish. Fish? she asked. Guppies, mostly, he nodded. She screwed up her nose slightly and arched an eyebrow. Remind me again, she said. Why do I talk to you? He smiled and shrugged. It's never been made clear to me. I guess you could just try pointing. Abigail pointed at the back wall by the workbench, where the door that served as a desktop was sitting, and the two of them moved to get it. "'I guess he is a lot older than you,' Timothy offered as they walked back toward the waiting sawhorses with the door between them. "'If your parents had a third child now, you wouldn't have that much in common with it either.' "'What are you saying?' Abigail said, her eyes narrowing. "'Are you calling me a baby?' Timothy laughed for a moment. "'sure that he was being kidded like he was the last time she pretended to be offended. "'An instant later, the expression on Abigail's face told him that this was not the case. "'Not at all!' he protested. "'In fact, quite the opposite. "'I'm suggesting that you would have nothing at all in common with a baby, "'because you are not one.' "'He set the door on top of the sawhorse and winced as it pinched his finger.' "'But to Jeremy, I am?' she challenged him, dropping her end of the door into place with a thump. "'Am what?' Timothy blinked. "'A baby,' Abigail said, the word hanging in her lips like some people might say the word poison. Timothy took a moment and considered his best course of action. Retreat did not seem to be working that well for him. "'Might I remind you,' he said, "'that I am not the one that tore the office apart, and that a short time ago you were actually fairly pleased with me. Abigail had to admit to herself that both of these things were true, but she did not have to admit either fact to Timothy. Stop living in the past, she said. Where's the blanket? What blanket? he asked, pleased that they seemed to have moved on from the part of the conversation where he was doomed. The blanket, she said with a vague gesture. There's a brown blanket that goes on the desk to make it look less like an old door across two sawhorses. It's over there, Timothy said, pointing to the corner. It looks like it's all balled up with some tape. The tape held the blanket to the legs of the sawhorses, Abigail said simply. Well, now the tape is holding the blanket to the rest of the blanket, Timothy said. I'll pull it off. You find some new tape. Abigail nodded and rummaged around on the workbench. He did everything first, she said after a minute. And not just a little bit first. Years and years before me. By the time I did anything, everyone was bored with it. Timothy frowned. I don't think that can be right, he said. Abigail pulled the roll of tape from one of the drawers on the workbench. Well, you weren't here, so you don't know, she said. He shrugged and pulled another gob of tape free from the brown blanket. I haven't been bored much lately, he offered. She tried very hard not to smile. Well, that's just because Jeremy never started a detective agency, she said. If he had, I bet they'd have bought him an ad in the yellow pages. Mm, I'm not sure I know what that means, he said as they stretched out the blanket and walked to opposite sides of the desk. You know, she said, like the phone book but with ads. Don't they have phone books at the library? You watch too many old movies, he said, pulling the blanket straight. No, she said. I watch exactly the right amount of old movies. He nodded. Of course. And for the record, we do have a phone book at the library. 
we use it for propping the door open when it gets hot. Abigail shook her head and smoothed out the wrinkles in the blanket before pulling off a strip of tape to fix it to the desk once and for all. She looked up as Timothy set a frame back on her desk. It was a heavy wooden frame containing the newspaper story about Abigail's first case, the rescue of Ezekiel Hightower, local lost cat. It might not be a billboard, he said, but your mom had the article mounted, and your dad put it in a frame. I don't think that they're bored either. I think they're proud. Mm, and maybe a little bit nervous. I think that they might actually like things to be slightly less interesting. Tough, Abigail smiled. And that's them. What's it going to take to get Jeremy to see any of that? I don't know, Timothy shrugged. I have fish, remember? Sure. Abigail said, rolling her eyes and smiling, just a little. I remember. From all of us here at the Mutual Audio Network, we thank all our listeners and creators for making us an award-winning home for four seasons of audio drama and audio fiction.